Welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about TIG torch accessories. Now, when it comes to TIG torch accessories, there are so many options and opinions out there. I've literally spent hundreds of dollars on different accessories for different jobs. And at the end of the day, it comes down to basically two setups that I use now to keep things just simpler and cheaper. I'm gonna show you those two setups, one for AC, one for DC, that cover 95% of the work that I do here. And hopefully this is helpful for you to be able to pick out, you know, what are really the most important things that you need and then you don't have to buy everything and keep it around. Now before we launch into the accessories, let's just talk about torches for a second. And the three most common for people who have a machine that's 225 amps or less. Now if you have a higher amperage machine, you're going to need a higher amperage torch typically, but uh, for most people, uh, this is going to be the most common amperage range of a TIG welder, and uh, this is going to be the most common torch right here. It's a number 17 torch. Now, if you're wondering what type of torch you have, what style, it says right here on the neck on most brands to help you know. Uh, that way you can buy accessories that you can be sure will fit yours. But this is the, the most common. It's an air-cooled or gas-cooled torch that comes with a lot of machines in this amperage range. A lot of times they'll come with accessories or cups that are really long. I don't like those. I get rid of them and get the stubby accessories we're going to talk about in a minute. Now, if you have a water-cooled torch in this amperage range, it's probably going to be a number 20. You can see it's a fair bit smaller than that number 17 and makes it a little bit easier to handle. Now, all of these are CK brand torches. I've kind of landed on them and I like them because they're really flexible cables. They hold up well. They're good price and they're a little lighter weight. So, uh, you know, I'm not sponsored by them or anybody else in this video, but I do really like their products and I have several of them here in the shop. You notice there's these three cables here. One's for gas, the other two are for cooling water to help remove the heat from this uh, torch head. So you can run a higher amperage in a smaller torch. It's a little easier to handle. This is my go-to I use most of the time. Now there's one more that we'll look at. It's a gas-cooled torch. It's basically the same size as that number 20 water-cooled torch, but it's not water-cooled, so it really can't handle as much amperage as either of the other options. But it's a pretty good option if you're not running high amperage at all. And it also uses the same accessories as the number 20. Now let's launch into these TIG accessories we're gonna talk about. I've got all six of them here in my hand. You can see it doesn't take up a lot of space. So there are a couple of items that are common uh, to both setups. We'll talk about those really quickly. The first one is the tungsten electrode. I use 3 30 seconds of an inch or uh, 2.4 millimeter tungsten electrodes. And I'll typically use the blue 2% lanthanated electrodes, but I've also used the chartreuse uh, laser electrodes. There's others called multi-mix and found them to work pretty much just as well. So you can just pick one, keep that on hand. Now, when I get the electrodes in, I go ahead and cut them in half and then I'll grind them using my little tungsten grinder that I built for 20 bucks in another video. I'll link that video down below if you want to build one of these things. But uh, anyway, I get them all in good shape like that. Um, the double-ended grinding both lets me flip it over to use it. It also makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of your collet. Now let's talk about collets. There's not a whole lot to say here. It needs to be the right size for your electrode and for your torch. Um, but I will point out there's a couple different kinds. One style is this split style collet that has a little slit in the middle so that it can squeeze down and hold your tungsten electrode in place. This is the most common that you'll see around, but there's also a new style that's emerged called a wedge collet. And these right here just kind of wedge in and jam your tungsten electrode to the side. And I kind of like them, though it's, it's not really a game changer. Uh, they don't get jammed up as much and you're not dealing with that split in there. But either way, you're just gonna need one collet basically that'll fit your torch and the size electrode you're using. Let's go ahead and talk about our DC setup now. So as far as collet bodies go, that's the this piece here that the collet fits in the back end of. I use a type that's called a gas lens and it has these little screens in it that act as a diffuser to help the gas flow out uh, more smoothly then you don't get as much turbulence and mixing in of the air. So that works really well for these uh, DC welds. Now, in front of that, I put a large cup. Uh, number 12 is what I'll typically use. This is a Furic cup. They're another good brand is Edge. I'm not sponsored by either of them, but uh, you know I do like their products. And if you look down inside this cup, you'll see there's another diffuser that helps to smooth that gas flow out even more. So you just get a flood of gas out over the whole area where you're working. And while that uses a little bit more gas, it just helps everything to go better, avoids oxidation, and especially on things like stainless steel. Let's just do a couple little demonstrations to show you what I mean. So the first one we'll do is just a 1 8 inch carbon steel. That's about three millimeter thick 
carbon steel uh, lap joint here. And I'll go ahead and tack it up here on the corner and you can see as I tack it, I'm just holding the post flow over there and it stays nice and bright right after welding. So there's no oxidation there that's gonna get trapped in that next pass of welding. And if you've ever welded over that oxidized material, you know it just doesn't flow in as well and kind of looks nasty. All right, so I'll go ahead and run this lap joint and I'm working along here just feeding in one millimeter, 40 thousandths of an inch uh, ER70 S2 filler. And I'm not running any pulse or anything. I'm running with the HDP Invertig 221 today. It's an awesome machine if you're in the market for a good quality TIG welder. Check out in the description below, I'll link a review that I recently did on this machine. Anyway, so once I get through there, you can see there's a little bit of oxidation on there. It's a little blue. However, you don't have that nasty gray oxide layer. And so this is easy to brush off and it would be good for another pass if you needed to do that. Just keeps everything nice and smooth. Now let's move on to some stainless steel. Now stainless steel tends to oxidize a fair bit more than carbon steel and these are 1 16th of an inch or right around one and a half millimeter thick coupons that I'm going to run a lap joint on here. Now I'm going to run a little bit different process. Here I've turned the HTP uh, pulse feature on and I'm running an autogenous weld which means I'm welding without any filler metal. And so as I move my way along, I'm just fusing these uh, pieces together and those, that cup is just flooding the whole thing with shielding gas to keep it from getting oxidized. And since I'm running that pulse process, it's able to diffuse the heat out into the material before that shielding uh, region is gone and I've moved past it so that at the end, I end up with a nice bright weld all the way across just a slight bit of straw color. Another couple of reasons that I like using a cup like this is you can extend your electrode way out and that helps to be able to reach down into tight angles and it also helps, I think, uh, with visibility, right? I like to have my electrodes sticking out a little ways so that I can just see a little bit better. So while it may use a little bit more gas than some other setups, all around on DC, it works really well, so I pretty much just use it for uh, all that work. Now let's talk about the AC setup that I use for aluminum. Now for this setup, I'm using a standard call-up body. Now standard call-up body um, sends gas out these holes in the side up your cup, and the difference there is you don't have that diffuser to smooth the flow of gas, but that's not such a big deal on aluminum, especially running a smaller cup like this. Now you can run a gas lens on aluminum AC welding, but uh, I like to run a standard collet body because it just keeps the overall torch a little bit smaller and it's really just not necessary with this size of a cup and the type of welding that you're doing. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cup itself. I typically use a number five cup. Now the numbers on the cups I didn't mention before have to do with the size that uh, they are in 16 of an inch, right? This crazy system that we use here in the US still. Anyway, um, so if you measure the inside of a number five cup, it's going to be five sixteenths of an inch. So the reason to use a smaller cup is that on AC, you're using half of the cycle of the AC waveform to actually etch and clean the material. And if you use a really large cup, you're going to have a really wide etching band. So this smaller cup keeps that gas focused right there near the tungsten electrode. So you're just etching out right on the outside of your weld and that keeps everything running really well. So the number five is a really popular size of cup for welding aluminum and I definitely agree. It just kind of works well. So uh, that's, that's what I use here on this setup. All right, well, thanks for sticking with me so far. Let me just throw in a couple of rules of thumb when it comes to setting your shielding gas flow rate. And that has to do with the size of cup. So most of the world measures gas flow rate in liters per minute. And if you just set the uh, number of liters per minute to the size of your cup, that's gonna be a pretty good starting point most of the time. So for this number five cup, set it to five liters per minute. Now here in the United States where you use CFH or cubic feet per hour, the good news is that if you just multiply liters per minute by two, double it, that gets you pretty close, close enough for uh, you know a good starting point. And so here for a number five cup, while it'd be five liters per minute, you'll run 10 cubic feet per hour. Now when it comes to setting the gas flow rate, I don't like to use the actual uh, flow meter reading. I like to use one of these little floating ball meters that can go right on the end of your TIG torch and then you flow some gas through and that ball will rise to the height uh, at which you're welding. And this wasn't a real expensive one. This one actually only reads in liters per minute, but I can just look for it to rise up to the size of cup that I'm using. 
Now I'll just note that when I'm using this uh, Furic number 12 cup, I can bump it down a little bit, right? So I'd typically be running 12 liters per minute or right around 24 cubic feet per hour. I can bump that down to 10 liters per minute or right around 20 cubic feet per hour because this cup works so well. I found that that works just fine for me. All right, well that's pretty much it for today. If you have some favorite setups for your uh, TIG that you like, let us know down in the comments so we can all learn together. And if you enjoyed this video or learned something today, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and we'll see you next time.